Good morning, Cyber Warriors. I hope the holidays treated you well. Today we're going to go into hidden messages. Let's go right at it. I want you to take a look at these two images. From all appearances, they look identical, but there's something different about them. And it's not just the file name and even the file size. There's something different about them on the inside. One is like a message in a bottle. So implanting a secret message inside of something else, whether it's, uh, you know, the first letter from e, the first sentence of each paragraph or, or even chapter in a book that spell out a special message, uh, the art of hiding messages inside something else is steganography. And steganography in the computer world, in cybersecurity, generally means that someone is doing something for nefarious purposes. So by that, I mean what would used to be a thing is that uh, browsers would automatically execute any code that was embedded inside an image. You could even put an entire program inside a picture. Uh, and when your browser is looking at that picture, it used to just run the program. And then people got smart, they changed the browser, so it wouldn't do that anymore. But they still allowed it to execute JavaScript, and they had to break the JavaScript. Now, it's still possible to have an embedded executable or embedded JavaScript or any kind of information or message inside your, your image, but you, you have to manually manipulate it. You can't just automatically have it executed by someone mousing over it or using a browser to open it or even opening it in your Outlook. Uh, it just doesn't detonate the way that it used to, but it still can be detonated. And yes, detonate is the appropriate term for it. How do we get a look at something that you ha you know that there is a, your, a system that you're trying to look at as an administrator was compromised or you're an incident responder, um, incident handler. Uh, so your system got compromised or the system you're looking at got compromised and you're trying to figure out how did that happen? And you notice that there was an image downloaded onto a system. And then shortly afterwards, there was a PowerShell script that was run. So what all could have happened? Well, you probably want to take a look at the image that was downloaded. And uh, let's take a look at the image. I'm going to grab this really quickly. And no, this isn't the PowerShell video. I'm just going to show you something in PowerShell. So get child item file. We're going to look at star PNG just to show that that will find what we're looking for and give us some information. We're also going to push it to get file hash. And we want the algorithm of MD5. Okay. So we see that the length is similar, but not quite the same. And the steganography one is slightly larger than the other. And that's bearing out with the file hashes are different as well. So even though they visually look the same, there's something inside that isn't quite the same. So let's take a look at the steganography one at the contents. So let's get content. And we're going to put this in quotes because this has spaces and yikes, that's a lot of garbage. You're not going to be able to read it that way. Um, it's just not possible because of the way that these programs or images are encoded. You have to have something to decode it. Browsers can do it by default uh, for most images. And then we have other things that will do it by default as well. But these are interpreters for the machine language into our visual space, right? So we clearly can't look at this this way, but we can do it a different way. 
we're going to go to steganography online and i will include the links for both the websites today down below so we're going to grab our steganography file we're going to open it and decode it oh sorry that's the encode we need to decode so let's go here grab that and decode that's much better so you can, can you see this? Let's zoom in a bit. You see that? This is our message. And our message, can you read it? You understand what that says? I can't either because it's what? It's encoded. Now, from our previous video, we know that messages that are encoded or strings that are encoded that are mostly alphabet or that tells us what kind of encryption is being used for encoding it. Base 64. If it's mostly numbers, what is it? Hex. That's right. So we're going to copy this out. And I want to talk about these. These are null operators or no ops. Um, and what they're doing is they're just padding the file to make it a little bit larger and change the size of it and the shape of it. And it's also an early obfuscation technique that would make it so that you couldn't hash something, upload it to virus total, and know that it was malicious. Or it would change it so that a virus or a malicious executable were not automatically detected by most antivirus and anti-malware. It's less effective today because we have heuristics that deal with all of those things. And we'll talk about heuristics in another video. But anyway, so we know it's encoded. So we have to go to our base64decode.org. And again, the link will be below. And we'll paste the message in there. We tell it to decode. And there is our message. Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Zur and the Kodan Armada. Heavy stuff. And if your name is Alex Rogan, be careful. If you understand the reference, comment down below and let me know. But anyway, that's it. It's really simple. We had a hidden message, we found the hidden message, and we even decoded it. Whew. All right, well, we found a message in the bottle, didn't we? Sure, it was addressed to Alex Rogan, not us, but that's okay. We still needed to know about it because reasons. More importantly, is we needed to know how to find and decode the steganography. So, as for always, Cyber Warriors, I hope you learned something. Happy hunting, and I'll see you in the next video.